ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋ ಸ್ಯದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಗತ ಮದಮಾನೈರಂತಿಮೋಪಾಯನಿಷ್ಠೈರಧಿಗ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥೈರರ್ಥ ಕಾಮಾನಪೇಕ್ಷೈ ನಿಖಿಲಜನಸುರ್ಜಿತ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಲೋಭೈರ್ವರವರ ಮುನಿ ಪೃಥ್ವೈ ಅಸ್ತು ಮೇ ನಿತ್ಯ ಯೋಗ so we come to the fifth turnika <coughs> of the moksha padi which is as follows it is actually sutra number 5 wrong me mentioned here on sutra number 4 so first i read out the sutra ಸಂಸಾರಿಹಳ್ ತಂಗಡೆಯು ಈಶ್ವರನೆಯು ಮರಂದೇ ಈಶ್ವರ ಕೈಂಕರಿಯತ್ತೆಯು ಇಳಂದೇ ಇಳಂದೋ ಮಿಂಗಿರ ಇಳವು ಮಿನ್ನಿಕ್ಕೆ ಸಂಸಾರ ಮಾಹಿರ ಪೆರಂಕಡದಿದೆ ಇಳಂದೆ ನೋ ಪಡ ಸರ್ವೇಶ್ವರಂತ ಕೃಪೆಯಾಲೇ ಇವರ ಹೆಳ್ ತನ್ನಯರಿಂದ ಕರಮಂ ಶೇರಂ ಪಡಿ ತಾರೇ ಶಿಷ್ಯನು ಮಾಯ ಆಚಾರ್ಯನು ಮಾಯ ನಿಂದೆ ಗುರುಮಂತ್ರತ್ತೈ ಬೆಳೀಟ್ಟ ರುಣಿಗಾನ್ very beautiful chudnika so i will <coughs> first elaborate the literal meaning samsari hal tangalayum ishwarayum marandu so samsari hal means those who are interested in worldly issues there are samsaris of course we are going to give a detailed account of what samsari really means according to the vyakhyana of pranavana mahi <coughs> tangalayum ishwaranayum marande so having forgotten themselves and the supreme lord also ishwara kain kariyatayum milande and also having foregone the servitude to the supreme lord then irando mingira ilavu minnike and without remorse about having foregone foregone the servitude to the supreme lord samsara mahira perin kadalile vilind no pada such people they undergo great misery by having fallen into the great ocean of samsara so seeing this hopeless situation that is not mentioned in the sutra literally it is to be under it is understood sarveshwaran the supreme lord tan kripayade by his divine grace tane shishyanumai acharyanumai ninni by placing himself as both the acharya and shishya tirumantrattai <coughs> veliittarulinam brought to light the supreme mantra called the mantra so this is the literal meaning of the <coughs> sutra archurnika 
So samsari hal. Who are the samsari? So what is what is the meaning of the word samsari? So there are four aspects associated with the samsari. That is, they are under the influence of avidya, karma, vasana, and ruchi. So Manuel Mamni beautifully <coughs> comments on this. He says. Ini mantratanudaya avatarana prakasha katana mukhattale Ini nudaya prama apratima vaibhavattai arulikchai hirad So what is this sutra all about? This sutra is all about the uniqueness and greatness of the Suttiru Mantra, Rashtakshara Mahamantra which is mentioned by means of talking about the events that led to the unearthing of this mantra. So that is what Manavana Mahamani says as an introduction to this sutra. Then the sutra begins as follows, Samsari el tanganayum nishwaranayum marandi. So who are the samsarins? Manavada Mamani says, Samsari hala hirar anadya chit sammandhattale pravaha rupe navarihira avidya karma vasana ruchi vivasharai janma maranadi klesha bhagi hirai tirihira baddha cheta narihali which I have paraphrased as follows. So who are samsarins? They are under the influence of four important aspects, avidya, karma, vasana, and ruchi. What, is, what are these four? I am going to explain subsequently. The above occurs due to the beginningless occurrence of the relationship with prakriti. So, when did the relationship between the Jivatma and Prakriti start? So, one can say it started when the transformation of the Brahman into the form of this world happened. But when that happened, actually as of now, we don't know. So, Anadi, it is called as Anadi. And as far as the Vedanta Shastra is concerned and also the roots of Sanskrit language are concerned, it is to be understood that Anadi means Na Vidyate Adihi Yasya Saha. This can be translated or understood in two ways. First is that for which there is no beginning. That is one way of interpreting it based on the roots of Sanskrit language. The second way of interpreting it is that whose beginning is not known. So both ways, that whose beginning is not, does not exist, or that whose beginning is not known. So we don't know when one can say that there is no beginning for the relationship of the Jivatma or individual soul with Prakriti or the primordial nature, which is known as Achit Sambandha or Prakriti Sambandha. So you can say it does not exist or we don't know from when it started. We don't know, it is. we can say it is beginningless or we can say we don't know when it began. Either way, it is one and the same from the point of view of what is happening now. So when it occurred, suppose I say it occurred 10 million years back, it doesn't matter. If it has, uh, if it would have occurred one trillion years back, then also it doesn't matter. So today, all of us are under bondage and we have to come out of this particular subject. And due to that what happens, they are also the recipients of pain such as birth, death, etc. So, my guru used to often remark when the story of the Namarvar used to be mentioned. So, it is mentioned in the case of Swami Namarvar that as soon as he came out of the womb of his mother, 
like all children undergo he also was to undergo the effect of a particular vayu or air called shatha which actually does away with the remembrances of the past births and also the resolutions that the child when it was in the womb as a fetus has made so it is very nice very rightly and also along with acceptable evidences mentioned that when the child is in the womb of a mother it's a very huge science the garbho upanishad talks about that but i am not going to that in detail now when the child is in the womb of the mother it is said that it thinks all these years for millions and millions of years i have been born and died i have encountered births and deaths and births and deaths again and again and again and again So, punarapi maranam, punarapi jananam, punarapi janani jathare shayanam. That's what Shankaracharya also says. It is very much acceptable to us in this regard. So, in this birth, when I am going to come out of the womb of my mother, I should not engage in worldly objects. I should dedicate myself to the meditation or service of the Supreme Lord and try to overcome the cycle of birth and death so it has a very strong resolution every child has this type of resolution that's what is mentioned by aparoksha gyanis are the people who who could see the divine but as soon as it comes out of the mother's womb and my guru used to tell in sanskrit they say prasava vedna are the one of the most difficult pains a human being undergoes is the pain labor pain which is undergone by a woman while she is giving birth to a child so the mother undergoes a unexplainable amount of pain it is universally accepted but my guru used to tell me people are not aware that the child undergoes even more pain but it doesn't actually remember it so we don't remember the pains that we have undergone as children probably after we are aware of what is happening probably after the age of 8 or 10 we may vaguely remember the pain that we have undergone so similarly what happens when what happened when namalvar came out of the womb when the shatavayu or the vayu associated with this primordial nature try to influence him he actually he shoo away the uh, shooed away the why you are the prakriti that accounts uh, that occurs on account of the prakriti sambandha and he actually continued with his divine nature due to which he could achieve all those things singhi trivai muri etc so i am not going to so why i am uh, came to mention this is not only our scriptures talk about marana sankata where a unique type of misery which is inexplicable because those who experience that misery they ultimately die and they don't come and explain it back to us that is mentioned or documented but janana sankata is not bad document So both of these are extremely painful in an excruciating manner so this is the reason and also they are under bondage so they are these are known as samsara so what is avidya karma vasana and ruchi very briefly i will explain what is the nature of avidya i will i have written it in a book in detail and just i will read it out it is very simple this is a very important question in vedanta systems of philosophy different systems of vedanta define it in different ways however it is universally accepted that avidya is the cause of illusory knowledge for example if a person thinks of the worlds of the demigods as eternal or if one thinks that the mortal body which is unclean is clean 
or if one thinks that the sensual pleasures which ultimately result in misery result in happiness or if a person thinks that the body mind sense organs and intellect the intellect constitute the soul these are the examples of illusory knowledge caused by avidya and this avidya alone is the cause of craving that is raga animosity dvesha due to which the individual soul is forced to perform many deeds that push him into bondage this can be explained as follows certain individual souls think that the world like the heaven etc are eternal and hence they perform certain sacrifices that result in their attaining these worlds which are actually non eternal it is said in the upanishads that chine punye vartyalokam vishanti as soon as a human store of virtue is exhausted once again they enter the human world that is this world similarly certain other individual souls depend upon this impure body and are under the illusion that the close family relations of kith and kin will protect them and varying unduly when they become far from them engage in familial and worldly activities alone without doing anything for their spiritual emancipation many also think that being born in the womb of the mother after spending many months in an impure atmosphere and a human life which is inevitably associated with impurities is very desirable these are the root causes of rebirth which is the primary effect of an individual soul being under the influence of avidya this is the authentic detailed account given in our in the works of our purvacharyas about avidya then what is karma these are various activities that a perform person performs by means of the three karanas of mind that is manas speech walk and body kaya this is of two types namely punya virtue and papa sin the result of punya is the enjoyment of pleasures both in this world and also in the worlds beyond papa is of many types which will result in extreme misery both in this world and the worlds beyond and the papa is due to the following that is akritya karana performing deeds that are prohibited by the shastras kritya akarana desisting from deeds that are ordained by the shastras bhagavad apachara sinning with regard to god bhagavad apachara sinning with regard to the true devotees of the lord and asakya apachara afflicting without any reason god and his devotees and other such actions which cause pain and suffering so this is the nature of karma in brief and what is vasana due to the performance of good and bad deeds certain mental impressions become inherent within us and with in due course without our knowledge these vasanas make us indulge in certain activities this is of many types depending upon the reasons and what is ruchi this is a defect of the mind which knowingly coaxes us to engage in prohibited activities and also prevents us from performing the ordained activities when a person has this fallacy he cannot be weaned away from certain instincts even if he is introduced to perform deeds that give superior pleasures so we come across people who smoke who have tendency to consume alcohol and other types of sensual pleasures which are quite obvious and prakriti sambandha which i have already explained so this is what manavada mamuni has to say about we samsarins then he says tangalayam ishwaramayam maran and these samsaris are under bondage people like us all of us tangalayam ishwaranayam marandi so they have forgotten both about themselves as well as about ishwara here a question arises 
How do you say that they have forgotten? Why can't you say that they have not known? Because if you ask me, do I have had the divine vision of the Supreme Lord? No. Have I realized the nature of my own soul? No. Then why is it that they are mentioning, he is mentioning that Tangalayam, Ishwaramayam, Marandevich <clears throat> literally means having forgotten. The answer is Dasa Bhuta Swatasarve Yatmanaha Paramatmanaha Nanyatha Lakshanam Tesham Bandhe Mokshe Tathaivacha Ingirapadi Swatasiddhamana Bhagavat Cheshatvattai Lakshanamaha Udayara Irekira Tangalayum Patim Vishwasya Swamitam Brahmanistitam Itya Dhyadil Jhullu Irapadi Angalik Nirupati Kashesia in Kira Ishwaranim, Ariad in Gay. So here Marande actually means they have not known. But in case a person says, according to the strict concepts that are concepts that are very specifically mentioned in the Vedanta Shastra, it says that. The Atman or the Jeevatman also is of the nature of Jnana and Ananda. That is knowledge and bliss. But this knowledge and bliss has actually been concealed due to the Karma Sambandha, which we just talked about. Right? So it is said like there is an example given. There is a beautiful lamp which is kept in the middle of the room which can illuminate the entire room in a very beautiful manner. But it has been concealed with a vessel that, has placed, that is placed on top of it, due to which the rays of the lamp are unable to go beyond the vessel that is covering it and <coughs> illuminate the entire room. So in that way you can say Marandir have forgotten. Or in another way, you can say they have not known at all. Both are, both are correct from two different points of view. So they have forgot, they don't know what is their own true nature. They don't know what is the nature of the Supreme Lord. They means we, all of us. Neither we know the Supreme nature of nature of the Supreme Lord, nor do we know the real nature of our own selves. So that is why he says, Tangalayam Ishwaranayam Marandi. So, what is the nature of Ishwara? What is the nature of our own self? That is the Jeevatma. Dasa Bhuta Svatasarvehyatmanaha Paramatmanaha. All the individual souls are inherent serv servants of the Supreme Lord. So, the nature of a Supreme of a Jeevatma or individual soul is that he is inherently <coughs> the servant of the Supreme Lord. And who is the Supreme Lord? He is the person who is the master of all the Jeevatmas or individual souls. Nanyatha Lakshanam Tesham. So this is the main, main, main criteria. So, how do I define a Jeevatma? A Jeevatma, that is why while mentioning the Lakshana in the, in the way it is mentioned in the Shastras, like Nyaya Shastra, it is said, Jnatratve Sati Sheshattam Jeevatmanaha Lakshana. So, the definition of a Jeevatma is given as follows. It is a person who possesses knowledge and who, who is of the nature of Shesha. That is, he is the serv servant of the Supreme Lord. So, the person, one who is the servant of the Supreme Lord and who also possesses knowledge. Such a person is known as Jivatma. So, if you say servant of Supreme Lord or subservient to the Supreme Lord, even Achit or Prakriti is also subservient to the Supreme Lord, but it doesn't possess knowledge. So that is why the two classes are mentioned in the Lakshana, the definition. 
so the jivatma is defined as one who is subservient to the supreme lord and also one who possesses knowledge a person who a thing or an entity that possesses both these aspects is known as the jivatma that is the individual soul have we realized this no we have not realized it. we have not realized that we are subservient to the supreme lord sometimes when we undergo great misery we think about the supreme lord and say oh this this has been your wish to actually give me so much of misery because misery is not under our control even though we don't want misery to come it automatically comes to us that is the nature of misery and incidentally even <clears throat> happiness also comes to us on its own account that is due to the wishes of the lord based on the past deeds that we have committed but what we feel is we feel whatever happiness or whatever good has happened to us we feel it's on account of our efforts whereas when some misery comes to us we feel that it is due to the <laughs> sankalpa of the supreme lord for which we are not actually responsible because we don't know whether we have been responsible for it or we are responsible for it so this is the <laughs> uh, paradox we cannot do anything about it. so <clears throat> we have for we don't know our own nature we don't know the nature of the supreme lord so samsari hal tangalayam ishwaraniyam marandi then ishwara kain kariyatayam milandi since they have forgotten about their own nature they have forgotten their fundamental duty of offering service to the supreme lord so here a question arises of course it is not mentioned in the commentary in this context how is it that service to the person can give you happiness so we all know when we are serving under a boss it's always a headache in one way or the other even if the boss is very well and benevolent very much favorable to us we don't feel very comfortable always with the boss even in case he is very even in case he is very favorable to us of course one need not say if uh, if the boss is not favorable <laughs> then it's actually a great struggle therefore it is mentioned as seva shvavritti rakhya to be in servitude is like being the dog which serves its master <laughs> so the advaitins raise an objection when we say that even in the state of moksha or liberation we offer our services voluntarily to the supreme lord they say even after going to some vaikuntha you are offering service what is this is it meaning this because seva shvavritti rakhya ta if you are in servitude at two you you say you are in eternal servitude how can a person who is serving another person gain happiness so suppose there is a great Uh, a very rich man and he is served for all the things somebody cooks for him somebody for serves him somebody actually massages his feet and hands and body somebody brings him his clothes for him to wear so all these things are done for a big uh, rich man so it is the rich man who enjoys all the pleasures will the person who is offering enjoy any pleasure so always the person who is served enjoys the pleasure who is serving he is always having some misery he will think no oh, it is my my <laughs> past uh, result of my past deeds that i have to engage in service of this bloody fellow so when you say even in moksha you are in eternal servitude you are going to be in eternal servitude that means you can never gain happiness in your life even after attaining liberation so what sort of liberation is it that is what the advaitins object with regard to our concept of moksha 
but our philosophers, our the Vishishta Dvaita philosophers have answered this question in a very beautiful manner. They say that servitude is the cause of misery only if it is forced upon you or you are compelled to do it or if it is the result of your past karma. They say karma paravashattu mupadhin when it is actually debated in a highly shastra man. But the meaning is like this. If servitude is forced upon you or compelled, so you are compelled to serve a person to earn, to eke out a living, then definitely it is the cause of great misery. Whereas if it is voluntary, even karma paravasha is also acceptable. But if it is voluntary or if it is preeti karika, then it gives you more pleasure than the person who is served. So the example given is, suppose there is a mother who has given birth to her child. So she does all sorts of service to the young child. So when it passes urine and passes tools, she cleans it without any hesitation. Without any ill feeling, she will not feel bad. Oh, I have to clean. Why should I do it? She does it with great love, with great affection. So suppose the child says, I don't want to accept your services. Will she keep quiet? We see mothers, even after the son, probably if they leave for such a time. Suppose the mother is, son is 60 years old or 70 years old, then also they will crave for their son and try to ask him whether he has had lunch, whether he has had his breakfast, whether he is eating properly, whether he is sleeping properly. So in Tamil they say, Petta manam pitte pillai manam kalli. The pangs of the mother, that is the mind of the mother is mad. Because even though the son does not expect his mother to do anything, he is already married, he has children and he is always thinking about his own children rather than the mother. So, Pille Manam Kal. So, the heart of the boy, uh, son is like a stone with regard to his mother. This is general rule, there might be exceptions. Whereas the mother is always thinking about her sons, whether he has one son or many sons. Then there might be a different, uh, there might be dif uh, different levels of affection for her own children. That's a different thing. It is generally believed that the mother loves the last son more than anybody else, more than the first son or second son, if any children exist. So she is always thinking about whether he has eaten, whether he has slept properly, whether he is comfortable, etc. And she, even though she may not be physically strong enough to serve him food. She doesn't mind it and serves him food. So servitude is a, sin, is a source of great pleasure for the mother. Similarly, if there is a very great person whom you respect most, then you gain a lot of pleasure by serving him. Suppose a big, great scholar who is a great devotee, he comes to our house what do we do? We offer our services wholeheartedly and do anything that he bids us to do. Because we respect him so much. And my father, many a times he gives an example. So you are in America, suppose Donald Trump comes to your house and he is sitting in your house chatting with you. Suppose he says, Oh, and so chatting with five or ten people there, or many people, for, let us say. Suppose he says, oh, I have left my specs in the car, can anyone get it? Five people will run, I will get it, I will get it, I will get it. He has not compelled anybody to get it. That means all the persons who say, I will get it, I will get it, they value him so much. And they feel serving him will be of great benefit. They may not expect anything in return, but just they want to serve him for the sake of serving. 
when it is so what about servitude to the supreme lord who is the greatest of all beings who is the master of all the millions and trillions and billions and billions and trillions of all the worlds serving such a person is of the greatest of great pleasures so that is why swami alavandara yamunacharya says tava dasya sukhaik sangina i crave for nothing else other than being your servant eternally that's what he says so servitude and to the supreme lord or service of the great lord gives great 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 pleasure so ishwara kaingariyatayum idandi all the samsaris like as we have given up the servitude to the supreme lord but have we realized what we have lost we have not at all realized what we have lost because we don't know the pleasure that is associated with the servitude unto the supreme lord so idam domen giraidam minnike we don't have even an iota of remorse that we have for gun beat <clears throat> servitude of the supreme lord idam domen giraidam minnike so due to all these reasons So a very beautiful example is given. Suppose Kesha was a Gaura Kesha Prabhu. He is owning a beautiful apartment, or he is owning a villa in Hawaii, and he has he wants to sell it for a price, and he wants to move to a bigger villa or something like that, or some other place due to some other reason. so after he has sold his previous villa somebody actually excavates the place and they find a pot full of gold which runs into millions of dollars so that owner is very happy but so keshav the keshav prabhu does not know that he has he could not access that because he didn't know that it existed so does he become unhappy or is he said that he gave away no because he doesn't know that such a great treasure existed within the uh, below the house where he used to live so idan do amin giraida mu minnike samsara mahira perankadile vilind no upada so without even having any remorse that we have about what we have already lost that is the supreme pleasures that we can we could have acquired long back by <clears throat> engaging in the servitude of the supreme lord we all are have fallen in the ocean of samsara but 99% of all of us even including me for example we think oh this is the place where we are we, are, we actually live where we are and it is the happiest place so a very <laughs> mundane or probably uh, inappropriate example can be given analogy can be given <clears throat> in india nowadays we don't find it in the cities but in uh, <clears throat> several places in north india where all the sewage is released into the open drains they don't have an underground drainage system in several places in india even today especially in the rural areas so there are gutters which are filled with the sewage water is most 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 filthy but <clears throat> what happens is <laughs> of course so what happens these pigs they actually go and immerse themselves in that sewage water and they feel most happy when they are actually in that sewage water they enjoy it so <clears throat> since they have never ever bathed in clean water they have never ever had the opportunity to have even uh, had the a glimpse of water that is made 
very uh, very very nice very enjoyable and also very uh, having good uh, odor by adding elaichi and uh, that is cardamom and uh, saffron etc so i have never ever even had an, a glimpse of such type of water or even they have never tasted so they think that immersing themselves in the sewage water open that is running in the open drains that itself is most enjoyable so even we are like that we have not realized that what we have given up we have not realized our ultimate goal we have not realized our own nature we have not realized about the nature of the supreme lord so actually we have <clears throat> we have fallen in the great ocean of samsara and we also don't realize that we are undergoing great misery each and every moment we think we are quite happy or only when something that we have lost or we don't have in life affects us then we think oh it's such a misery but once that misery is sidelined we feel we are very happy but actually we are undergoing great pain every moment samsara mahira perin kadalile vilind no pada for this yes <coughs> further beautiful beautifully explained ityari helai chollu ira padiye tangalik nirupadi kashesiya irikira ishwaraniyam mariya rangai aanal ariyamala ariyamalennade marandeen enbaanen munburukkal nilaitu minbanni minban nilaitu prachuti vanda vidathile marandenna marandenna laavalennil marandeen unnai marandeen unnai munnum engira padiye satas siddhamana sambandhai unarndal munbu nilaitu munbu nilaitu vanda varthathai maranda pole irukkum sambandhathil uraippen So just I have explained all these portions. ஈஸ்வர விஷயத்தில் கைங்கரியமாயிரமபுருஷார்த்தத்தையும் பிராபிக்கவே பேராதே என்கை புருஷார்த்தத்தினுடைய கௌரவத்தையும் அதற்கிட்டு பிறந்து வைத்து கிட்டப்பெறாமல் கிடந்தபடியையும் நினைத்து இழந்து என்கிறார் இழந்தோம் என்கிற இழோம் இன்னிக்கே என்றது ஸ்வஸ்வரூப பரஸ்வரூப ஜானமும் புருஷார்த்த ஜானமும் இல்லாமையாதே ஸ்வேஷத்வரூபா ஸ்வேஷேஷத்வானுரூபமான சேஷி விஷய கைங்கரிய ரூப புருஷார்த்தத்தை இழந்தோம் என்கிறவள் அல்லாப கிளேஷன் தானும் இன்னிக்கே என்கை samsar so all these things i have just explained i am just reading the pankis even listening to the original literature authored by our purvacharyas is said to be a great virtue because this have been authored in such a way that they will soothe our mind by their sound value also சம்சாரமாயிர பெருங்கடலிலே விழுந்து நோபடா என்கிறது சம்சார சாதனம் கோரம் அனந்த கிளேஷ பாஜனம் என்கிறபடியே அனந்த கிளேஷ பாஜனமாய் ஒருவராலும் ஸ்வயத்னத்தால் கரைகாண பரிதா கணைகா கரைகாண வரிதாம்படி இருக்கிற சம்சாரமாயிர மகாசமுத்திரத்துக்குள்ளே விழுந்து ஆபத்ரையா விபூதராய் கொண்டு கேஷப்பட வேண்டை சோ ஹி எக்ஸ்பிளைன்ஸ் வாட் இஸ் தி டிஃபிகல்டி ஆர் தி மிசரி த டைப் ஆஃப் மிசரி தட் அ பர்சன் அண்டர் கோஸ் ஜூரிங் தி ப்ராசஸ் ஆஃப் சம்சார் சோ ஹி சேஸ் அனந்த கிளேஷ பாஜனம் கண்டினியூஸ்லி ஒன் ஆஃப்டர் தி अदर ஒன் ஆஃப்டர் தி अदर ஒன் ஆஃப்டர் தி अदर we have to undergo miseries and this portion is such that 
no one can try to cross the ocean by one's own efforts so one's own effort is required to a certain extent but it is like if i want to <coughs> cross the pacific ocean by swimming across can i do it so it is about 10000 miles across so how can i do it so probably i can so they say we cross the english channel which is about 25 25 kilometers or 30 kilometers or they may actually cross an ocean a part of the ocean that is 50 or 100 kilometers but i have not heard even as a world record any person who has crossed the entire pacific ocean of 10000 miles because water might be uh, freezing in certain places freezing temperatures will be there so many um, uh, sharks and other whales and other things which may eat away the humans might be there there might be piranha fish or something like that so many creatures which actually harm the human being so without assistance just as a human being cannot cross the pacific ocean or atlantic ocean similarly a aap an atma or an individual soul cannot cross the ocean of samsara oruvaranam srayatmattal karekhana varidam padirekira samsara mahira maha samudrutta kulle vidindi then tapatraya vibhutarai kundu we are afflicted by three types of miseries it is known as adhyatmika dukha adi daivika dukha and adi bhautika dukha so <clears throat> adhyatmika dukha is the dukha that occurs on account of the karma etc associated with the atman for example we undergo the misery occurring from various uh, so we occur uh, on account of various diseases that is mental and physical then we are may to occur uh, undergo miseries occur occurring due to natural causes like floods earthquakes tsunamis and also various pandemics epidemics etc and also the adi bhautika that is these things adi daivika that is due to the panchabhutas that is the earth water air fire and also the ether we have volcanoes etc in adi daivika dukkha on account of the devas or the demigods who afflict us or who punish us when we don't do what is ordained to please them <clears throat> as part of our duty and also many times when we actually act in a way that is detrimental to the welfare of the world and also that are the relation uh, the miseries that are associated with the body which are considered as adhyatmika dukkhas <clears throat> so with this we are afflicted a human being is afflicted with these things and ittal tangalayum ishwaranayum mariyadayariyamayanum purusharthatayariyamayanum samudratkulle kidandano padadirka virodhiyana samsaram kannayum tannistarano paatmetayum ariyamayanum ஞாத்தவியமான அர்த்தபஞ்சகத்திலும் ஒன்னும் அறியாமல் ஒன்னும் அறியாமற் கிடந்தார்கள் எங்கை பிராப்பியசிய பிரம்மணோ ரூபம் இத்தியாதிப்படியே சகல சாஸ்திரங்களும் பிரதிபாதிப்பது அர்த்தபஞ்சகத்தையும் இரே சோ வாட் ஹவ் வி லாஸ்ட் வி ஹவ் லாஸ்ட் எவ்ரி திங் இன் லைஃப் தட் வி நீட் யுவர் டு அச்சீவ் டியூ டு தி absence of knowledge of the arthapanchaka which has already been explained in great detail it is prapyasya brahmano roopam praptushta pratyagatmana prapti bhayam bharam prapte tatha prapti virodhicha nature of the individual soul nature of the supreme brahman nature of the means to attain moksha <coughs> and the fruits that attains after a person attains moksha and also the impediments that can afflict a person 
when he is trying to engage in sadhana like bhakti yoga karma yoga or charanagati இருவர்களுக்கு அனுகிரகமாக அறிவிக்கைக்காக இவர்களுக்கு அனுகிரகமாக அறிவிக்கைக்காக சகல சாஸ்திர சங்கிரகமான திருமந்திரத்தை சர்வேஸ்வரன் வெளியிட்ட பிரகாரத்தை சொல்லுகிறது மேல் சர்வேஸ்வரன் தன் கிருபையாலே சோ சீங் திஸ் மிசரபிள் சுச்சுவேஷன் சுப்ரீம் லார்ட் பை ஹிஸ் டிவைன் கிரேஸ் பை ஹிஸ் காஸ்லெஸ் கிரேஸ் so suppose we see a person suffering suppose he is a relative suppose a person sees his son or wife or husband suffering and immediately he has so much of misery and he has so much of compassion but suppose a person sees somebody who is suffering in the street he may not worry too much he may be indifferent or if he is very sensitive then he may offer some help but most of these types of compassions are based on some upadhi or some condition that is suppose a person is some relative or somebody who has helped us or something like that but <clears throat> what we call as jeeva karunya or compassion towards the entire class of jeeva atmas can be had only by the supreme lord so the supreme lord out of his causeless compassion he called it as nirhet kripa in sanskrit <clears throat> so he says that is the tan kripayale ee sheshitavya sambandhat anidam prathamadapi engira padiye anadiyah sarvarodum sarvarodum undana visheshitavya sambandhatte mudayanayam peruman एवं प्रकृति चक्रस्थे ब्राह्मणे स्वकर्म जीवे दुखा कुले विष्णो कृपा कापजाते आल दीज आर वेरी ब्यूटिफुल प्रमाण आर कोटेशन दट आर टेकन फ्रॉम सेवरल सेवरल डिफरेंट सोर्सेस एंड एक्चुअली ईच ऑफ दीज वैरेंट ऑन सेपरेट लेक्चर so here <clears throat> manavad mamri quotes a very beautiful shloka he says what makes the supreme lord have compassion towards the individual souls which resulted in the tirumantra artha tirumantra being <clears throat> exposed to the ordinary human beings he says evam samsruti chakrasthe bhramya bane svakarma bhi जीवे दुखा कुले विष्णो कृपा का उपजाते सो द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ऑल्सो सीज ऑफ कोर्स इट ऑल्सो हैपन्स टू हिज ओन विश कंटिन्यूअसली दिस संसारा इज गोइंग ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन सो देयर इज नो एंड एट ऑल एंड ऑल द जीवात्मास दे आर एक्चुअली एम्बेडेड इनटू द सिस्टम continuously that also from here just going along with the uh, what do you call the momentum so then at some stage the supreme lord thinks i have to do something to revive the situation how long can i get let all the jeevatmas remain like this under bondage so i should address them and whoever is whoever puts in some effort and becomes the recipient of my grace i have to at least liberate them so ultimately the solution is given to all of them in sanskrit there is a beautiful saying vitarati guru pragye tathaiva yatha jade so for example in the primary school or in high school there will be about 30 at uh, 25 or 30 students in the class and the teacher is teaching all of them in the same manner he does not concentrate on one particular student or he does not be indifferent to another student he the words that actually come out of his mouth in the form of teaching are the same to all the people 
but out of the 25, suppose he is teaching a subject called mathematics. Five or ten people will be very good among the 25 or 30. And out of the ten, five might be very good. And one or two might become outstanding. They may go on to become masters or they may be, do their PhD in mathematics. So always it is like a pyramid where in the high school level you have thousands. In India you have millions of students. As we go on and down and down towards the edge of the pyramid, there will be some thousands of out of the millions. So similarly in this case also, Though the Supreme Lord has given all the millions of people the Tirumantra, how many of us are practicing? Or how many of us have been exposed to it? And even among the exposed people, how many are practicing regularly? How many chant this? And among them, how many actually use the Tirumantra to attain liberation? It's a huge challenge. So, Jive, Dukha, Kude, Vishnu, Trupaka, Pupajayate. When he sees the, sees the individual souls undergoing so much of misery, he then says, I have to do something. Therefore, karamaram sherum padi. So he says, he wants to do something so that they realize the Supreme Lord that is himself and ultimately come out of the vicious cycle of births and deaths. And kare maram sherum padi. So then what happens? They have to come to the supreme abode of Vaikuntha as we have all known as far as Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya is concerned. He says, Samsararnava magnanam vishayasakta chetasam vishnupotam vinananyate kinkidasti parayanam. Very beautiful saying. He says, for us, for people like us who are actually floating around in the samsara arnava, the ocean of samsara and vishaya sakta chaitasam, what is our main aim? All of us want to enjoy life, enjoy the ordinary pleasures of life, non-spiritual pleasures of life. And most of us don't even contemplate that we want to go beyond the samsara, cross over the samsara and attain eternal happiness. But if at all one wants to do, then Vishnu Potam Vinanyati Parayanam. There is only one ship or one boat which can help us cross the ocean and attain and attain that abode or attain that location which gives us eternal happiness. There is only one boat and that boat is Vishnu. You can call it a boat or you can call it a ship. They call it as Pota. Vishnu Potam Vinananyati Parayanam Lord Vishnu or Narayana alone is the only ship or boat which can actually help us cross the ocean of Samsara where we are all floating now in the water. Indra Shallu Hirapadiye Samsara Nistarano Paya Bhutanana Tanmayarinde Samsara Sagaratte Kadande Akkare Padumpadi Engai Tane Shishya Numaya Chariya Numaya Ninni Naranaranai Udahat Udahat Taranul Shingamai Virittavan Ingirapadiye Naranarai Narupena Vataritti Maranana Dan Chishyanumai, Narayana Nanatan, Ajarya Numai, Nin Nengai, Nin Rendai. So, this I will explain in the next class because we have run out of time. So, <coughs> uh, interaction is welcome, questions are welcome, feedback is also welcome. Swami, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to ask a few things. Uh, the story of Naranarayana Rishis. Where in Shastras will, uh, is it, it told? Is mentioned here. So I will explain that in the next class. And, okay. And also, if you could explain, it, it seems that uh, Naranarayana Rishis' uh, story is being singled out as being most important. 
but there, there are so many other avatars and there are so many saints either before and after uh, Naranarayan Rishis. So they may have slightly different uh, um, messages to bring to us. Why specifically Naranarayan Rishis are most important above uh, overall past and present saints and, and uh, avatars? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> then uh, the other question, which some other people had on a different group, they wanted to know uh, why God creates Nitya Suris and Bada Jivas. Why he creates two types of Jivas? <laughs> why he gives some eternal Nitya Suris are not created. They are eternal. They exist like that only. So they have another, they are eternally, they don't have a beginning. They don't have an end. They are they are there Ananta Karuda Vishak Sena Deha, as they say. They are there in Vaikumta to serve him. So all why, all, why, other, why all other jivas all other jivas are Bada Jivas. Yes, all other Baddhas in the sense we we classify them as two. So they have been Baddhas and then they have attained liberation, they are called as muktas. And then you have Nitya Muktas, that is Nitya Suris. So Baddha, Mukta and Nitya. So the niches are very few. We, we say they are also innumerable in number. That's what we understand. But Ananta Garuda Vishak say, they say how much number we don't know. You see, the number, the question of number is not very much relevant. Because how many Jeevatmas are there in the world? We don't know how many animals are there. We can say human beings there are 6 billion human beings on the earth. But earth is only one, one small iota in the entire solar system. And like this, they say trillions of solar systems are there. It has been proven by the uh, persons who deal with uh, what is that called? What is astronomers? Science itself says there are trillions of uh, solar systems like this. Trillions. So we, our, our uh, vision is so much uh, limited, we, we cannot even feel the uh, extent of the earth. So earth is a small planet in the solar system. So it's, uh, it's mind boggling, you cannot, you cannot even imagine, it's beyond imagination also. Okay, so um, also the, a question came, you gave the definition of a jiva and two lakshanas, you gave, gave two qualities of a jiva that yes. uh, and it seems like Mahalakshmi also fits these two lakshanas. <laughs> so, so the question is, my, very, I know I, very, this is going to be a big discussion, I think. But, that's uh, a very contentious question between the Tinnacharya uh, school of thought and Vadagalaya school of thought. That we will uh, discuss sometime later. Right. Because uh, it's a very tricky issue in the sense I, I am not saying this is correct or that is correct, this is wrong or that is wrong. My guru used to say, there is such type of uh, discussions occur when we don't know the real nature of the object. Right. So, for instance, uh, the Dwaitis, Madhva, Madhva gives a definition of, Ma, uh, of Lakshmi, Ma Lakshmi, as Dukkha Asprishya. So that uh, she is, a, she is, he considers her like a Jiva, but, but, uh, she, she, he says she is unique because she has never experienced sorrow. But that, that is uh, true with regard to Ananta Garuda Vishakshana and uh, etc. I agree. I agree. So I'm not, I'm uh, not, you, I'm not uh, saying... You her in the Nitya, Nitya Sori group. Yeah. But we don't do so. <laughs> right. Because she is also a person who is served. Though she is Arislav Narayana, together they are served by other people. Anyway... <laughs> Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's so, it's a it's a very tricky question, but a very difficult question. I yeah. will not say this is correct or that is correct. So let us uh, we will discuss that about that. So also you mentioned about you gave different examples. You gave the example of the mother and the example of a great person. Both of them, uh, we want to. The mother wants to serve the child. Uh, no matter what the age, and uh, the, and if we if a great person comes to us. We also want to please them without any reward or we, 
we, we feel like we want to, we, to serve them and we feel happiness serving them, even if it's a small service. So it, exactly, so there are many different relationships that we can have with, with God, but in, yeah. in, all, in all of them, we feel, we feel this, type of, uh, this type of service is, is uh, we feel happiness from this type of service. So I appreciated that very much. Art Thank upon, you. You uh, my father keeps mentioning that example. So uh, I am very indebted to him for here, yeah. having given this example, which is very much uh, it is in line with our experience. Yes, Ar Panchikam, You mentioned Artapanchikam, and uh, of course, Pillai Lokacharya has written a book, Artapanchikam. Is has it? He, is he the first one to delineate it, or is was is it there in other shastras and before his no, time? No, it is there. Uh, it is. Uh, it has been mentioned in many other places. But uh, he has written a specific work uh, focusing on this type of analysis. Yes. Okay. So this so type of analysis he has focused on. So that way it is a unique one. Okay. So my last, uh, my last couple of questions also might take a lot of time. The, the first one is you mentioned about uh, Neohetika Kripa, causeless <laughs> grace. So I want the definitions. I want to understand what is the difference between Sahetika Kripa and Neohetika Kripa. Well, oh, the question is, it is not uh, universal, it is, uh, it is a very subjective question in the sense. So does the... Um, and also Sabogya, Sabogya Hetaka Kripa. Sorry? Also Sabogya Hetaka Kripa. Sorry, I could not, Sabogya? Sabogya Hetaka Kripa. Kripa. Sabogya Hetaka Kripa, is it? Yeah. Um, or yeah. what does the, where is that mentioned? I no, I, I read about this. That it, seems that, it seems that God enjoys the sins of the world because it gives him a chance to show his, his uh, solabhya and to show his daya. Just like a mother enjoys, uh, tells the child not to play in the mud, but the child... Oh, yeah, the that, is, that, is the, that is the question of vatsalya. <laughs> uh. That is with regard to the question of Vatsalya, how it has to be defined. defined. So that is also another uh, bone of contention. That is the definition of the uh, term Vatsalya, where the Ternacharya school defines it as Dosha Bhogyatva. That is enjoying the sins or the fallacies of the Jivatma. That is how one uh, defines it. And another school defines it as dosha anadara hetu. Vatsalya is the cause of being indifferent towards the fallacies. So enjoying the fallacy is one thing, being indifferent to the fallacy is one thing. What is it? So my to give a very general explanation, a general uh, 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 view about this. My guru used to tell me several of these issues belong, uh, several of these issues are dependent upon sentiments, which are the form of subtle human, uh, what we call as bhavanas or uh, dispositions. So I will not uh, give the example of. Uh, the love between a husband and wife, because it may not have, it may lead to some uh, problems or uh, incorrect understandings. So suppose a mother loves a kid, her own son, who, uh, who a small child which is one year or two years old. So she kisses the child many times. So how many times? She should kiss her child to shower her love on the child. Should it do? Should she do it ten times? Is it fifty times? Is it five times? It depends on her and the child. <laughs> some mother might think uh, if I kiss it again and again, it may have some problem. It may affect the child's health. So I'll desist from doing. Does that mean that she does not love it? 
so when sentiments which are in the form of subtle human uh, dispositions towards certain things so i will give another example suppose you have a very beautiful uh, very tasty delicious this dish called mysore pak have you heard about it it's very tasty and delicious so some people what they do they say while uh, food is served they will say i will not have it now after food i will have it and uh, uh, every half an hour or 45 minutes they will take a small piece and put it into their mouth and enjoy the uh, taste so some people will say i have seen many people do like that some people will say no no i want to have it in the middle of my meal because then only it is more taste which is correct so it depends upon the person how he wants to enjoy it of course there might be some advantages in this and disadvantages advantages and disadvantages in both but ultimately how he wants to enjoy the taste of mysore pak depends upon his own self so even when i have seen in india in mango some people want to have the entire fruit they want to peel off their uh, peel off the uh, covering their teeth and then they want to enjoy the entire fruit some people say no no my hand will become messy somebody cut and give it to me then only i eat it some people enjoy that messiness also <laughs> so it all depends on sentiment and when sentiment is involved you cannot actually limit it to say this like this 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 only this only this only etc so when it comes to for example sakrit pranama and asakrit pranama that is prostrating once and prostrating many times so when you see my father also has resolved this in a very beautiful manner so when we realize our limitations before the supreme lord and also the unlimited amount of sins that we have committed it is not enough even if we prostrate 100 times because we have committed so many sins but when you see the greatness of the supreme lord and his compassion and his nature of forgiving all the sins that the individual souls have done even if one time to prostrate the sinner so from this point of view this is justified from that point of view that is justified so there is no quarrel so just Unless like you in, want to make it an issue of quarrel <laughs> so like uh, ramacharma soka sakrideva that is for prapatti right that is not with regard to that is pranama and prapatti are different right as far as prapatti is concerned those who perform prapatti as a ritual even for them it is to be done only once right so still, still, still we see uh, we see we see deshika sampradaya people always always doing multiple pranams no 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 they don't perform prapatti again and again no no only once uh, pranam they do pranam yes. they do multiple yes. times yes that is why i said this has to be resolved in that way uh see, where there the, are where, two among the, these scholars, uh, among the people there are two types those who want to make a, an issue of a small thing also they can make it there is nothing wrong yeah based, based upon their disposition but there is no, in these in these aspects there is no any reason to quarrel or raise an issue make it an issue and uh, debate and things like that many of the issues that is the that forms the difference are based on their own dispositions where they want to make an issue out of something and then uh, indulge in some debates and ultimately present yeah. quarrel yeah i i don't really want to enter into the debate between the colloids yes. but uh, but as i said these things uh, many of them are based on sentiments like whether one should prostrate once or many times right so as i said as my father has very rightly pointed out or even my acharya he also used to say the same thing 
when a person when the jivatma is he realizes his humility when he realizes his shortcomings and he also sees the greatness of the supreme lord any number of times he prostrate shanta mat so they do 12 times they do four times they do two times yes <clears throat> but when the supreme lord's compassion is seen in prostrating one one time is also more than enough yes so but still but still you said that uh, all shri vaishnavas are doing property only once but we we hear from we hear from deshika sampradaya people uh, about about sharanagati in samashrayanam and then baranyasam and then even baranyasi some, some, some other things prior to the property somebody is saying that these are all different things what happening no, as far times. as as far as i know as far as my knowledge goes property is done only once that is samashrayanam is different and varanyasa or varasamarpana is done only once in their life as a, as a ritual it is done as a separate ritual it is done but in the tenacharya sampradaya that is not done as a ritual that is it is included in the patya samskara itself right it is not done as a separate ritual It, it 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 is part of the yaga part of uh, of of yes it is my yeah, right yes you already know almost everything that is need to be known <laughs> no no i don't know but uh, but i'm guessing and i'm and i'm i want also other people to know yes 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 so and and then my the the only last thing because i know we're going late uh is that if if the pramanas which you're giving in the class can be written uh that will be very helpful uh there are some there were some slokas and things perhaps i can go through but uh, has the tra- the translation of the included or not in the english translation that you have on uh, the pdf you have which you are sharing uh i well you gave it for instance i i noticed you gave you gave a sloka you gave a verse of giving the uh, definition of art of panchikam yes uh it is quoted here actually is quoted there but i don't know that it's that it's in our uh, it's in our book um so these sort of things if i go through the class again maybe i can pull out some yeah otherwise some... Uh, you can just see if it is mentioned otherwise i will i will put it on the slide and show it thank you so i have not tried to make it too elaborate because uh, even certain shlokas they need lot of elaboration but uh, uh, it will become it may become unwieldy because now for example this sutra is quite a long one yes and to explain it may take two three uh, three four classes so i want i don't want to make it too long I understand also if you need some if you need some help with the diacritics for the slides just let me know and then what i'll have to do is i'll have to share them in advance to you so that you can put the diacritics and let us let us think about it If anyone and, else uh, has any question or comment um uh please you can just unmute and, and ask Swami just one quick question from uh last week where you were talking about um one has to have a f- complete faith in the mantra the acharya and the deity and then you mentioned in one part that um you know if one one has to have um full faith in the acharya if the charya is qualified or not that's a different question but that's what i wanted to find out if you have full faith in your acharya even if your acharya may have some discrepancy but of course you worship your acharya fully and have full faith in your acharya uh you've kind of like done your bit isn't it you don't have to you know worry if he's qualified or not is it is that what you're saying yes 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 because so, the lord he Mm-hmm. the acharya is supposed to be a gnani or who has had realization of the supreme lord now you can switch on your camera no problem but in case that is why we say suppose now for example i will not uh, refer to any individual suppose the acharyas that we have taken samashayan from our when he is not a realized soul that doesn't matter because ultimately that is why i said in the pulloka acharya shrivatna bhushna he says the acharya thinks about himself as the representative of his acharya 
and he should treat his disciple as if he is his class classmate <clears throat> so he does not take upon himself the mantle of the acharya so there is a very beautiful shloka by swami kuresha or kure tarvan as we call him in uh, call him in tamil he says who am i he says ramanujang krisharano sri kura pradeepa asit sayamu namune sachanatha vamshya vamshya parangusha mune sachasopi devya dasa tave tita varada asmi tave kshani i am nobody i have no qualification whatsoever but i have one great qualification i am the <clears throat> most 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 virtuous servant of raman jatya i have taken refuge in his feet that is my only qualification then who is raman jatya he is the direct disciple of yamuna jatya who is yamuna jatya he is the and descendant of nath muni who are all realized souls and who is nath muni he is the direct disciple of namalva or shatakopa and who is shatakopa he is the direct disciple of vishwaksena who is vishwaksena he is the direct disciple of goddess mahalakshmi and she is not different from you or she is your first disciple so it's like uh, if you want to enter the white house you say i am uh, the, i am the son of the press secretary of uh, trump so you please let me in there with you provided they get the proof etc so like that he says i am nobody i have no qualification whatsoever but i have one qualification that is i have taken refuge under the feet of ramanand jatari and who is ramanand jatari so he traces the entire guru parampara and says he goes up to lord narayana himself so that is how it is <laughs> some people are also saying that uh, that uh, it is enough to have ramanuja sambandha that ramanuja has done the property we don't need to do the property ramanuja has done the property and we we just uh, connect ourselves somehow to ramanuja in yes, very that is all that is all yes we fully accept but it is easier said than done <laughs> so it is in principle yes it is correct but once again it depends upon the person how much he has how much he has realized that how much he has dedicated himself to the feet of ramanand acharya etc so in principle yes it is correct but it, 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 even is, those people they they still they take some ashrayam they take pancha samskara from an acharya yes yes they don't because, they don't they don't because, say i can the, i can uh, be directly all with, all all said and all said and done <clears throat> though the sampradaya the lineages have deteriorated to a very very large extent still there is one iota of that spark which still continues to run in the sampradaya so when my guru's guru who was a great realized soul he used to mention about the varnashram dharma for example where we say the brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra the system so the shastra specifically mentioned that a brahmin son necessarily is not a brahmin it is janmana jayate shudra karmana jayate vija etc so it's by his deeds that a person becomes a brahmin not by means of his birth but still that guru who was a great 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 realized person he used to say still one small speck of that spark still exists in the lineage we have failed to realize it we have to be very honest but that speck still exists which can actually become a fire which will actually be lead us to some uh, salvation so similarly in that parampara still something some speciality exists which will if we follow it properly we attain liberation it's not very easy as 
many people actually depict it to be they say you say ramanuja acharya and uh, attain moksha you say ramanuja once you get moksha <clears throat> of course it is mentioned in the hariyashtaka um uh, and the, the krishna ashtaka koti janma kritam papam smarane navinashya i asked my guru to say koti janma krita the uh, sins committed in uh, one uh, 10 million births will uh, disappear by remembering lord krishna once how is it possible uh, for example now i have remembered krishna he said has it happened he said have you had the experience first to have the remembrance what does remember mean can i remember how how i is i cannot remember because i have not at all experienced it so if you have the divine experience and then remember it definitely it will happen so with the realization if you say rama amja once <clears throat> if you say narayana once say say sankirtya narayana shabda matram vibhuta dukha sukhino bhavan if you utter narayana in the way that it has to be uttered with the realization definitely it will happen but without realization it will not happen but that doesn't mean it's useless it has its own value <clears throat> so i think can conclude chedramanujetyesha <clears throat> chatura chaturakshari ramavastam prapadyante namo antamadusha nyam bhode vikasay papadvam takshayay cha श्रीमाभूतभूम राजिवाकृतवीचार निरंकुश विभूत भाजपदाश्रेण शो